All right, in this video, we're going to briefly talk about counters and accumulators. Um, these are two ways in which we can keep track of running totals as we go through our code, especially now that we're talking about loops and updating values within those loops and all that kind of stuff. These are just two different, I guess, ways of thinking about keeping track of these running totals. So let's get into it. Um, I am covering F5.6 in this video. All right, so counters and accumulators are both numeric values that are holding on to some kind of sum. They're keeping track of some total amount of something. Uh, counters will actually count something. So for example, how many hours have I worked today? Or how many times have I been through this loop? Or how many powers of two have I calculated? Or anything like that. Um, if you are counting, usually counting by one, so for first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, all that kind of stuff, and you're holding on to that count, how many things you have counted in some variable, that variable is usually going to be a counter. On the other hand, an accumulator accumulates something. It takes a whole bunch of values and adds them together, keeping a hold of the running total. Such as, how much money have I made today in total? Maybe I'm working different jobs with different rates of pay. I can accumulate how much pay I have made across each hour that I have worked at the different jobs with the different rates, and that accumulated value is the total amount of money I've made today. Uh, and usually both, you know, you're going to initialize both of them before use, and then you update them as necessary, often within a loop, as you keep on calculating new values to add into this total that you're holding onto. Usually you're initializing it to zero, but sometimes counters do start at one. It depends on how you're actually doing the counting. For example, if you're inside of a loop, do you start it at zero and then add one to it as soon as you have actually done the counting? Or do you start it at one and treat that as this is work towards the first thing I am counting, and then at the very end you add one again to say, all right, now let's start the work for the second thing I'm counting, and so on and so forth. Uh, also of note is that these can count down. Counters can count down, or accumulators can, can actually uh, lose value as well if you have, say, a total amount of money and you're spending a certain amount of, like on different expenditures, um, you could also be taking value out of that accumulator, but it's accumulating the total amount of money you have in a particular budget. So what I have here are two examples. Um, one is of an, a counter and the other is of an accumulator. So with a counter, we are initializing it before the loop, and you know this is actually the code we were working with before this um, code that you know, we would count up different numbers and put those numbers inside of the label. So we have a counter starting at one. We initialize it by saying, you know, declaring it as an integer and setting it equal to one before the loop, because we initialize all of our variables at the top of our procedures. And then inside of the loop, we update it as needed. In this case, we're updating it at the end of the loop after we've successfully stored the previous number in the label. Now with the accumulator, uh, right here we are using an accumulator to hold on to um, scores that the user is actually giving us. They're keeping track of scores. Let's say they're a pinball nut and they're trying to keep track of all of their scores and see what their best score is across all of the games that they've played. So we give them an application where they can enter their score uh, and then put it in. I, po I apologize, not uh, keep track of all of the scores and then figure out the highest. It's more keep track of the total amount of points that they have earned over all of their games. So they enter in their score and we add it 
to our static accumulator right here. Because remember the static, uh, the static value right here. If a variable is static, it will stay around even after the procedure ends. Like it still exists, but it can only be used within that procedure. So the second time I call this procedure, this variable will still be around with the value that it was holding from the first time that I ran it, and so on and so forth. But it's an accumulator because every time we enter a score into the application, it gets added to the total. Right here on line 21, it's getting added to the total using double total equals double total plus double score. So we're updating that accumulator. And then because it's static, it stays around as long as the application is running. So that's the difference between how we're using the counter and the accumulator right here. Now you could use an accumulator with a, with a loop. That's totally possible. Uh, and in fact, the apply the concepts section does actually show that off, but um, you can also use either a counter or an accumulator with static variables right here. But the big difference is a counter is always going to be like going up by some set value, usually one, whereas an accumulator is going to be taking in different values and those values could be of different sizes. It's storing just like a total across all of those values, whereas a counter is just how many times have we counted? How many times have we added one? Now this right here is a screenshot from Super Mario Brothers 1 for the uh, Nintendo Entertainment System. Uh, this is a screenshot from the speedrunner Cosmic, his former world record for running this game in 4 minutes and 55 seconds. It's a very cool video and I'll try to make sure to link it in the description. But Super Mario Bros. 1 is actually really helpful because um, it can actually show us different examples of accumulators and counters. For example, with the counters, we have two of them on the screen right here. The time counter, which uh, is in seconds, there's no milliseconds or anything like that. It's an integer time value and the amount of coins that have been collected. So the coins one is pretty easy. Every time you collect a coin, it gets increased by one. So if uh, he were to collect a coin right now, it would go from 60 to 61. That's the total number of coins he has uh, collected. Minus the fact that, you know, when you get a hundred in this game, it actually just gives you an extra life, but we'll pretend like that doesn't exist and that this is just the total number of coins collected overall. The time is an interesting counter because it actually counts down. Uh, in this level, uh, Cosmic here has 320 seconds to actually beat it. Uh, and if he doesn't beat it in 320 seconds, uh, Mario, will, Mario will lose a life and he will have to start this level over again. Given that this is the former world record, I don't think he has much to worry about. Now the accumulator is actually the score. Um, this shows Cosmic has achieved uh, 96,000 points across the entirety of playing the game. However, you know, you can see this 1,000 point thing right here that he got for killing this uh, poor hammer bro, hammer bro down, who's falling off the bottom of the screen. You know, 1,000 points is a pretty hefty amount for Super Mario Brothers because I believe, if I'm not mistaken, the smallest point amount you can get is 100 from collecting a coin. And enemies are usually 200, although if you bounce on two in a row, the first gives you 200, the second gives you 400. If you, if you keep bouncing on enemies, you get uh, increasing and increasing and increasing amounts of points until you just start getting one-ups. So this accumulator isn't taking in 1,000 points every single time, and it's not like Cosmic has uh, killed, what would it be, 96 enemies. Um, the accumulator is taking in a lot of different point values from a lot of different sources, including coins and enemies and power-ups and finishing levels with a lot of time left, which he's doing because he's a speedrunner. Uh, he has a lot of points from all of his speedrunning prowess. So this is an accumulator because it's taking in all of those different point values and storing the accumulated score, the, the total score. And hey, you could watch 
this video or any other video of a game like Super Mario Brothers or Super Mario Brothers 3 or something like that, where those games still keep track of scores very openly and easy to see, you can watch, you know, a speedrun maybe of those would be pretty fun because they keep it quick, but also they're very interesting to look at if you're into that kind of thing. But you can see how accumulators and counters are actually working in action as the um, runner is progressing through the game. So it could be a very interesting way of applying this, you know, taking a look at it and see how the, um, the knowledge can be applied to what you're learning. All right. Well, that is the brief note on counters and accumulators.